Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're gonna take a look at another problem of finding points on a curve where the tangent line is horizontal. Now, if you haven't gone through the first problem, check that out. I had that link down below in the description and we've set everything up from the beginning to make sure you can understand how to solve these. The main idea to find where tangent lines are horizontal is we're gonna calculate the derivative and then set it equal to zero. And that gives us an equation that we solve for x. Now, a lot of the work comes down to solving equations, and for this problem, it comes down to factoring. So let's get right to calculating our derivative for our function here. It's pretty simple. We just need to use the basic power rule to calculate the derivative here. So we have our function. Let's calculate f prime of x. All right, we're gonna bring the power of three down to get six x squared. Next term, bring the power two down, we'll get minus six x in the derivative. Differentiate the next term, the derivative of x, that's one. So here, think of 36 as a constant multiple. We're gonna have minus 36 times one. We'll just write that as minus 36. And then your last term, one, that's a constant. That differentiates to zero. Make sure you're comfortable with all those differentiation rules. If you're not, check them out. I have them linked down in the description below. All right, so that's the work for calculating a derivative. Pretty straightforward. Now what we want to do to find where the tangent line is horizontal, we're going to set that derivative equal to zero. So take your derivative, f prime of x, set it equal to zero, and the calculus problem turns into an algebra problem. The equation that we're now solving is 6x squared minus 6x minus 36 equals zero. And that looks like something we might try to solve by factoring. Now, this is a quadratic equation, so you can use the quadratic formula, but always see if you can try to factor it first. Here, what I notice, every term has a factor of six in it, so let's factor that out. So we'll pull out a factor of six, and then in parentheses, we'll have x squared minus x minus six. And that now makes it easier to try to factor what's in parentheses. We might call six the greatest common factor. The part in parentheses, we can factor that further. Numbers that multiply to negative six, but add to negative one, negative three, and positive two. So we get for our complete factorization, we have the factor of six that we pulled out. We have a factor of x minus three times x plus two. All right, and that's really the work for the question. What we now do is set each of these factors equal to zero. We don't have to worry about setting six, that factor equal to zero. We can just go ahead and divide off the whole equation by six, and we're just left with those two factors if you want. All right, so only set the factors with x's in them equal to zero, and we get two simple equations, x minus three equals zero, and then x plus two equals zero. And those are very simple to solve. Looks like we're going to get x equals positive three. And it looks like we get x equals negative two. And those are the x coordinates. Like the first problem, the question is asking for the points. In other words, coordinates as an ordered pair. So we have our x coordinates. We will just plug them back into the original function, f of x we're here written as y equals to calculate the y coordinates. Again, be careful. Don't plug these x values into the derivative. Plugging x values into a derivative gives you slopes of tangent lines. You want to plug these x values into the function. Function values are y values. All right, if you go ahead and do that, if you plug in 3, that's going to come out when you plug that into your function here. Plug in x is 3, you're going to get negative 80. 
And when you plug in negative 2 for x, again, plugging that into your function, that'll come out to 45. And those are the two points where the tangent line is horizontal to the graph of that curve. Now, we've answered the question, but to make sure you really understand how all these ideas fit together, let's go ahead in the next part, take a look at the graph. Here's the graph of our function. This is a degree three polynomial, what's sometimes called a cubic polynomial, and the rough shape looks like this. Now, depending on the graphing tool that you're using, you might have to play around with the window to size it correctly to see the shape of this graph correctly. But if you were to get it right to be able to see the full graph, the peak and the valley there with the full graph, you'll find that you have a horizontal tangent line at the point negative 2, comma 45, and there is another horizontal tangent line at the point 3, comma negative 80. Now, right now, sketching this graph by hand would be very difficult, but again, that is a goal you'll be working towards later in your Calculus 1 course, using only the equation here and a combination of first and second derivative, you'll be able to sketch that graph without any help, without a graphing calculator or any graphing tool at all. All right, I hope you enjoyed the problem. If you did, support the channel, like and subscribe.